Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and for those of you that are in our Discord, follow me on social media, or pay attention to community posts, you will already know that I've been gone yet again for an exceptionally long period of time due to a motherboard failure and an inability to replace said motherboard due to a general lack of finances. Life is expensive at times, I know. Well, several generous viewers took it upon themselves to send me enough money to purchase a replacement motherboard with expedited shipping, and we are now back in business, so huge thanks to those people that were so generous. It really does mean more to me than you know. In addition, I was planning on releasing this video yesterday, however, it was not of an acceptable quality in terms of information in my estimation, and so I scrapped it to start over because standards should matter. It also reminded me that I rarely mention this in my videos, and I probably should. In case you are not aware, there are links down in the description of every video for my Nexus.gg portal, which was formerly Chrono Deals, as well as links for Patreon, PayPal, Ko-Fi or Coffee or whatever, and the link to the Sid Alpha Discord. And this replacement motherboard couldn't possibly come at a better time, because very early in the AM yesterday, Earth 2 quietly slid into the initial release of Phase 2. On top of that, I want to take advantage of our time here to discuss some additional Earth 2 subjects, including some common arguments we see from Earth 2 supporter YouTube channels such as Aria Realty, and the arguments they make in order to shill for the project, which include likening it to Bitcoin, continued accusations against our channels that we are only in it for the ad revenue, and the never gets old to outdating the outrage. So obviously I have a lot to say here as I've been away for a while, especially considering I recorded this video yesterday, but I felt it wasn't up to my standards, so I decided to scrap it and redo it. So let's get started. This is probably going to take a while, at least for me. Now, I will give Earth 2 the benefit of the doubt here and say that the quote-unquote Phase 2 is supposed to be a great many things, including the first iterations of the game itself. And while this first iteration of Phase 2 is minor, I find it rather humorous that it should very much be a Phase 1 item and it's merely being stated as an initial item from Phase 2. I suspect this might be in order to show at least a perception of progress, but we'll see. And this initial offering for Phase 2? Well, it's jewels. That's it. Just jewels. But what are jewels, as in what are they in Earth 2? Well, they are specifically in terms of mechanics, resource boosters for resources that don't actually even exist yet. Now, the user E2 Analyst on Medium posted an article breaking down what jewels are and what they do, and it is underwhelming, to say the very least, where they write, Jewels are, by simple definition, resource boosters in Earth 2. Let's say your property can produce 100 kilograms of wood in a month. You add a small spawned brown crystal, aka the brown gem, and suddenly your wood production will increase to, wait for it, wait for it, 100.5 kilograms of wood. Yes, not joking, that's exactly what you get because the gems that are being given out now are less powerful ones with just plus 0.5% ability. Now, currently, according to the author, the only jewels available right now offer a 0.5% boost to the currently non-existent resources that are listed as fresh water, coal and or oil, wood, iron ore, limestone, sand, and gold, with more types of boosters with different effectiveness ratings coming soon. Apparently, these jewels will appear on your map box tile randomly and is visible within the resources page. In addition, they've stated on the Earth2 subreddit and Discord that they will be working on APIs and an SDK for you to be able to do their job for them in regards to creating video game content for the platform. Because yes, Earth2 is no longer a terrible investment opportunity, no longer is it a video game similar to The Matrix or Ready Player One, it's a platform, which tells me that no Earth2 game will ever actually come into being. They have also stated that they are close to finalizing an acquisition that will help with the first quote-unquote official example of a PvP game linked into the Earth 2 platform, which, judging from their hiring of Tanner Rosankovic, aka Buddy Boy Benson, I have at least a 10% belief that this PvP game may well simply be a retooled civil contract or Monogon Echoes, and I hope to God for their sake that will not be the case. However, this announcement of a PvP game being linked to the Earth 2 platform lends more credence towards my supposition of what they will ultimately try to do. And given we have two members of Five Studios Interactive, specifically Nathaniel Doldersom and Farron Galvin working as Earth 2 developers, it stands as a much higher percentage of a chance that Drone will be the PvP inclusion they were referring to. In addition to that, on the Drone Discord from May of this year, it was announced, We've been looking for options on how to continue developing in a good, healthy, sustainable way, and at the moment we are focused towards a very promising deal for Drone. While we cannot provide more information at this point, we're looking at a secure future for Drone. 
from the discussions of Earth 2 being a platform. I surmise that there will be no metaverse, similar to The Matrix or Ready Player One. At least, not in any meaningful sense. No, remember that Earth 2 has continued to make absolutely certain everything in relation to what they have been doing is locked into a closed ecosystem. Any form of payment processing is limited to being directly tied to their systems. PayPal or any other legitimate third-party money handling systems are simply not available, and I do not believe they ever will be. In fact, it appears these options are being further limited limited even in terms of paying into their system as well as paying out. Prompts regarding Apple Pay have been removed, so I'm guessing that is no longer available, and the withdraw to bank option seems to have disappeared as well, something that appears to have been quietly removed and that removal was not included in any Discord announcement. They had an announcement on June 17th regarding payment processing improvements, but nothing about any sort of removal. Of course, I personally don't begrudge the direct wire transfer option being removed as it required a vast amount of privileged data for this untrusted and in my opinion untrustworthy company to be able to facilitate that. However, they still require proof of photo ID and your personal address for your credit card withdrawal, something that I feel no company of this nature should ever request or require. And while this is only supposition on my part, it makes a large amount of sense that this is the direction they would be going in, in terms of being a platform as more of a game itself. After all, games critic YouTubers as well as other games developers have all weighed in on the, shall we say, alarmingly scam-like nature of Earth 2. And no, I apparently can't outright call it a scam, otherwise Shane Isaac will spurg out with defamation complaints again, where YouTube itself will flatly refuse to review any counter submissions. That is also something I've seen the shilltubers latching onto by saying, these guys don't even call it a scam anymore, as if it is some sort of victory or that our minds are being slowly changed. Nothing could be further from the truth. The fact of the matter is, it's not worth quibbling over a single word in order to combat a vindictive and bitter dirty dev where we in fact have no capacity to combat such a thing thanks to YouTube's idiotic guilty until proven innocent policies where they refuse to even tell you what was claimed as defamatory. That in no way translates to us changing our minds. Our opinions regarding Earth 2's scamminess remains unaltered. We simply have to use different words to keep Shane Isaac from going off of his meds again. And there's a lot to say about Earth 2 itself, which should be self-evident from the length of this video as I've been absent for the last while, but first I will say this in regards to the jewels. This was idiotic and ass backwards. The Earth 2 developers should have started with the release of resources and then implemented jewels, but what the hell do I know? I'm just a mook with a mic and I would never consider releasing something that boosts something that doesn't even exist. But, in terms of the overall investment contract mentality of Earth 2 and its ardent supporters, it does make a certain amount of sense. After all, there are a metric ton of tiles that need to be sold. These investors have got to get paid, otherwise their map box rectangles will continue to be worth precisely nothing. And as the only current way these jewels can be obtained is random appearance, they encourage all Earth 2 accounts to check daily to see if they have had any of these things show up. This significantly and artificially ramps up the active site visit numbers, making the project at face value appear to be far more attractive to potential larger investors and will help maximize search rankings to rope in new I mean, new map box rectangle purchasers. And as with any project such as this, it only makes sense from the developer's standpoint to focus on the monetization element of the game, or should I say platform, because apparently it's not a game anymore, in order to continue funding development and acquisitions. However, with such a monetary system taking place entirely within a closed ecosystem and a lack of any protections whatsoever, such actions only help reinforce the perceived scamminess of Earth 2. And a lot of that ties back into some of the very common arguments I've been hearing in recent days and even in my own communications with Earth 2 supporters, people who have had no problem with the most predatory terms of service I've ever seen in my life, arguing that it's no different than Facebook's terms of service, arguments likening Earth 2 to Bitcoin and apples to oranges comparison if I ever saw one, which I'll discuss in just a second, and of course claims against those of us YouTubers that have been raising concerns are simply doing so in order to make quick and easy ad revenue. The first argument, the terms are no different than Facebook's, which is also an apples to oranges comparison. You see, the terms are very different from Facebook, however I will state that likely these shilltuber channels are focusing specifically on the aspects where Earth 2 can kick you to the curb for any time, for any reason, or for no reason at all. 
they can simply decide to do it. In addition, there were the clauses where you can be ejected for saying something objectionable or religiously offensive without ever once making any attempt to define such nebulous terms, which, in terms of social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, that is extremely common. I will give them that. But the thing the shill tubers are refusing to take into consideration is that Facebook is a social media site and is not offering investments in any form of digital asset on or within the Facebook ecosystem. Removing your account on Facebook removes your ability to speak on that platform. Removing your account on Earth 2 also removes access and ownership of your digital map box rectangles. Now, granted, they say within the Terms of Service that they'll pay you for those. However, they also state in other areas of the Terms of Service that they will pay you the original value of the tile, which is going to be roughly 50 cents. That is a massive difference in terms of the Terms of Service and what termination of your account means, and that should be exceptionally concerning for these shield tubers who claim that they have made tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars on the Earth 2 platform. You would think these intellectually deficient people would want some way to be able to protect their investments, to be able to protect their being able to access their property, because it is supposed to be theirs, it is supposed to be able to be belonging to them, but they completely ignore all of it, preferring to instead continue telling you how you will make money in Earth 2 and how it's guaranteed that you'll make money. After all, look at me, look at how much I made. And that all boils down to the essence of what these shill tubers are doing, because they haven't made all that money, at least not yet. No, they first need you to buy those tiles so they can cash out. In addition, don't forget to use their promo code so they can get a little bit of extra scratch out of you, leaving you holding the bag before the whole house of cards comes crumbling down. Because with monetary schemes such as these, the early investors, which you, if you haven't bought anything in Earth 2 before January of this year, are very much not, are the only ones making money. And you, the late adopters, are the ones left holding a bunch of now worthless digital assets that can't be sold or traded anymore, meaning all of your property that is worth a massive amount of the vaunted e-bucks aren't worth the cost of the electricity to display them on your screen. Of course, these shill tubers will come back and claim that there will be a blockchain, and the map box rectangles will be NFTs, but for general flow here, I'll circle back to those two aspects as the second discussion point will likely tangent in NFTs, so bear with me. And that second discussion point is the comparison of Earth 2's map box rectangles to Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency out there. Firstly, in order for me to properly refute their claims, I have to discuss a little bit about how Earth 2 handles their little rectangles versus how most cryptocurrencies function. And firstly, because I know these shill tubers love attempting to claim that we're rallying against Earth 2 because we don't understand the technology, citing Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and blockchains, I have to ask them, do they? Do they have any comprehension as to what the hell they're even talking about? And I kind of don't think they do. Now, a cryptocurrency in layman's terms is a cryptographically secured digital currency which makes it well nigh impossible to counterfeit, which is one of the reasons why Bitcoin, being the first cryptocurrency, was seen as being so valuable as it was not controlled by any country, could not be counterfeited, and was mineable. Now, cryptocurrencies will take several different forms, but you will hear terms such as decentralized blockchain quite a lot, of which Bitcoin is decentralized. And decentralization as a sliding scale is extremely important for things like cryptocurrency as it promotes a trustless environment, meaning no one has to know or trust anyone else. Every member of the network receives a copy of the ledger, and if a member ledger differs from everyone else's in any way, it will be rejected, meaning attempts to alter the ledger itself will not be accepted, and if there is ledger corruption, it is also not going to be accepted. Decentralization also improves data reconciliation, optimizes resource distribution, and reduces points of weakness. With Earth 2, you are currently looking at a closed ecosystem. Note I did not say centralized, because the definitions are somewhat different, although not by much. What I should say is that the Earth 2 map box tiles do not appear to be cryptographically secured assets, so I doubt we could even refer to them as centralized. As they have been discussing blockchain and NFTs, I suspect they are wanting to cryptographically secure their rectangles, however currently they can't even be referred to in any way as a cryptocurrency or an NFT. Just a square on a map, that's literally it. 
Now, within a closed ecosystem, it holds many of the similar respects of a centralized exchange, but with some notable differences. The most notable similarity here is that the Earth2 rectangles rely completely and entirely on the Earth2 company and website in order to exist. This places investors at an extreme risk, especially if this is a scam as many of us believe. Well, we all remember BitConnect, after all. In addition, as I do not see any evidence of these being crypto in any way, all you have is their word and their appallingly predatory terms of service to rely on, which is like being a bunny rabbit with a bad leg sitting down next to a hungry wolf in terms of safety and security. By contrast, with a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, those are cryptocurrency of a decentralized nature, which also means a lot of things, but the most pertinent example here is with Bitcoin. There is no entity that owns the Bitcoin environment, because there is no Bitcoin environment. There is no company that could potentially shutter their doors tomorrow and wipe the largest currency in the asset class from existence. But that's not too great of an example. Let's take a more current example where there is a company involved with a cryptocurrency. Let's take a look at Ripple and XRP. Now, Ripple utilizes XRP as a bridge currency for cross-border transactions, something many blockchain currencies are capable of doing. Bitcoin can do it, although it's slow and not really cost-effective, and Ethereum does as well. If Ripple were to disappear tomorrow, XRP would still exist, would still be a viable cryptocurrency, and would still be available on the open market. Ripple is using XRP as a tool to be sold as a facilitator for cross-border transactions at an extremely fast and cost-effective means. But XRP does not rely on Ripple to exist. Currently, and as it has been operating, the exact opposite can be said of Earth2's little rectangles as well as any NFTs and NFT sites out there. If Earth2 shut down tomorrow, if a particular NFT website shuts down, all your rectangles and all of your e-dollars, your NFTs, would be dust in the wind. Not only that, with cryptocurrencies, you can load those cryptocurrencies from one exchange to another. You can move them from an exchange into a wallet or from a wallet to an exchange. You have no capacity to do that in Earth 2, like I said, because it is an entirely closed ecosystem. In addition, you can purchase cryptocurrencies in fractions. After all, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin in order to purchase Bitcoin. If you got 100 bucks, you can purchase $100 worth of Bitcoin. With these map box tiles, you have to buy them in a whole, which makes sense as while they attempt to compare the technology to cryptocurrencies and blockchain, they are currently fundamentally different at every level. So likening Earth2's rectangles to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general is an apples to oranges comparison. Now I know they're planning, much like NFT manufacturers are planning and many have already implemented, a blockchain transactional bridge. That does not make Earth2 tiles or NFTs a blockchain or cryptocurrency themselves. No, the blockchain is, as I said, the transactional bridge currency that will facilitate the buying and selling of tiles and or NFTs along with their signing to help make sure those remain secure. However, the objects themselves are still 100% dependent on the existence of the company itself, which means their long-term value is likely to be extremely finite. In addition, I believe Earth2 want their e-dollars to be representative to or become a blockchain itself, which is all well and good. There are several other extremely terrible games out there that have attempted such a thing in the past. I recall an abortive attempt by LaserChain to do just that in a rather underhanded manner, which landed them on the list of dirty devs as well. But I will say this in terms of Earth2 and their monetization attempts. Without a way to export those assets, and for those assets to still have value, Earth2's monetization attempts are, in my opinion, not unlike a snake oil salesman. And those jewels that they released as round one of phase two exemplify that. Of course, the third argument being that we YouTubers that are critical of Earth2 and find it to be highly suspect in every regard are simply in it for the ad revenue. Now, these Earth2 supporter YouTube channels, sorry, shill tubers, either refuse to see or are simply too stupid to see the hypocritical nature of those statements when they make them. In addition to how incredibly false they are, now, these Earth2 supporter channels have a massive monetary investment and bias in regards to Earth2, and they stand to directly and greatly monetarily benefit for shilling for Earth2 in order to dupe people into investing with promises of quick and easy wealth because these shill tubers have to sell their tiles to someone in order for their quote-unquote investments to be worth anything. Oh, they can say they've made hundreds of thousands, but unless they can offload those tiles onto somebody else, they haven't made anything. They have digital objects that might carry a valuation that would be a profit, but without selling, there is no profit. 
and considering the terms of service involved and the exceptionally shady nature of this project, you would be a fool to consider this project as it is inherently dangerous at every level. Mr. Smuggins himself, Arya Realty, states consistently that he guarantees you will make money, which, despite his wholly inadequate below-the-fold disclaimer that he is not a financial advisor and his lame-brain half-hearted attempt to state the same at random points within his videos, usually in once if at all, is financial advice and, I believe, deliberate framing. When he states that he guarantees that you will make money on Earth 2, or it is impossible not to make money, or anything along those lines of stating a certainty regarding what amounts to a speculative investment, is offering financial advice that is not absolved by any disclaimer, thanks to Hogue Law's discussions with Upper Echelon for that clarification. And on a side note, Mr. Smuggins only began making those inadequate disclaimers that he is not a financial advisor after Upper Echelon Gaming called him out for it. And the reasons, in my estimation, that they make these claims that we are only in it for the ad revenue are threefold and only two of them are conscious in nature. The first being that it is used as a methodology of discrediting our channels and concerns we raise, while at the same time blatantly and disingenuously ignoring their own far greater financial biases. The second is that our channels are founded and based upon a structure of trust trust from our viewers, and trust in our viewers that we are attempting to provide information and awareness as to what happens within various arenas of the games industry, and an at least implicit understanding between creator and viewer that that trust is never to be knowingly violated and reasonable steps should be taken in order to prevent even an accidental violation of that trust. And of course, the third subconscious reason is that these channels themselves seem to be completely and utterly focused on enriching themselves the rest of the world be damned. And when you have a mindset that is so completely focused on greed being the primary and sometimes only motivating factor, it is a basic rule of human nature that you view the motivations at a conceptual level you yourself have in others. They see that motivation in our channels because to them it is the only motivation possible because it's the only one they are capable of comprehending. And if that were the case, if our channels really were purely motivated by greed and easy money, how easy would it be for us to make use of our channels towards that end? And trust can be an exceptionally powerful motivator after all. You'll recall at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how my motherboard had failed. Now, that was true, but what if it wasn't? What if I said that my entire computer was a ruined mess? No processor, no motherboard, drives dead, power supply shot, RAM fried, video card a ruined mess, Maybe a lightning strike or something, and then I fired up a GoFundMe for a new computer. How quickly do you think under those circumstances I would have a new computer? Especially if I went to other YouTube channels that I'm friends with and asked them to share it around? Probably pretty damn fast. Hell, even with my specifically asking people not to give me money, I had enough to replace my motherboard with expedited shipping the next day. But you know, that dead computer could be a lie, and I could simply pocket that money and laugh my way to the bank. Well, let's continue down that thought process for a moment. With that level of trust, and bear in mind the majority of my viewers are by no means stupid people so it would have to take a little bit of creative thought to be able to adequately sell the idea, with that level of trust that I have garnered from my viewers, with a creatively constructed and logical argument that would allay concerns as long as not too many people looked into it too closely, how many of them do you think I would be able to have invest in such a thing, even at $1 tiles using my promo code? having them specifically purchase in areas where I already own all the prime real estate. Definitely not as many as a larger channel, but still thousands of people, potentially tens of thousands of people. And if we were all just doing it for the easy money, as it were, imagine the added power we would have if we had numerous creators such as myself, Upper Echelon Gaming, Big Fry TV, Kira TV, and probably a couple of others all in on it. If we were all trying to sell our viewers on the same thing, it would increase the perceived legitimacy of what we were selling, even if what we were selling was a lie. After all, if we continue on with a premise that has been brought forth by the Earth 2 shill tubers that we're just doing it for the ad revenue, why would we settle for, well, in my case, less than $50 per video when we could make thousands or tens of thousands of dollars by selling a lie? And the simple answer is truth. Our channels rely on truth and honesty in order to function. They rely on integrity. They rely on ethics. That is why people have faith in our channels. That is why when I come to my viewers after being away for several weeks saying, hey, my motherboard died, they know I'm being honest with them. 
Because with our channels, knowingly lying or attempting to deceive our audiences is a cardinal sin, likely resulting in the self-immolation of our channels. Yes, we make ad revenue on our videos. That is not a payment for services rendered in any way. It is akin to a TV show where operating expenses and the like have to be covered so people watch commercials on products. Something that I know Earth 2 will eventually want to implement as well, but I highly doubt those same shill tubers will condemn them for that because it doesn't violate their internal narrative. We also have people donating to us on Patreon or PayPal or Ko-Fi or Coffee or whatever because some of those viewers voluntarily choose to show monetary appreciation for our saving them money from dirty devs or crappy games and sometimes in appreciation of showing them a worthwhile game that they enjoyed. But all of it is couched in terms of consumer awareness, of consumer advocacy, and of trust. Now let's take a look at the shill tubers for a moment. They constantly try to downplay anything we say within our videos. They constantly ascribe nefarious intent and actions to us. While at the same time, they are blatantly shilling you a product that isn't even a product yet because they are engaged in greed and they want to be able to make money off of you, off of their viewers and they're being dishonest about it and they do not want anyone to impede that. So by all means, continue ascribing dishonest reasons behind our actions. Keep making false equivalencies in order to shill for Earth 2. And Earth 2 devs, I'm sure we all look forward to more stunning implementations such as a digital item that boosts a thing that doesn't even exist yet. Uh, now that I got that out of my system, I would like to say just one more time, thank you so much to those that sent me money to get me back up on my feet. I will do my best not to disappoint. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. And I'll see you next time. Now it's your turn to wait for it.